Welcome back to Inside Politics. We're talking to the mayoral candidates of Nashville. Today, our guest is Charles Robert Bone. Uh, Charles Robert, uh, one of your opponents, Bill Freeman, is beginning to send out campaign flyers, particularly in the minority community, of pictures of him with President Obama. Right. Uh, that's not an endorsement by the president, but he has raised money for the president, as have you. Do you have a similar picture with yourself and the president? Are you going to be using it in your campaign materials? Uh, I do have similar pictures, as a matter of fact, and certainly was uh, Harold Ford's finance chair when he ran, and so I have, so some, long, have, some, I have, I have mm -hmm. some long relationships um, in that community. But what I've really enjoyed about this race is the nonpartisan aspect of it. Um, with all due respect to the president, who I consider a friend and was supportive of, I'm tired of the partisanship at the state level and the federal level. I think it's refreshing to run in a nonpartisan race to be able to put together different coalitions of folks that want to see the very same thing and want to see Nashville continue So you don't success. think a picture with you and the president gets you any votes, necessarily? Oh, I don't. I, I haven't made that estimation. I'm not saying we would never use it, but I am fatigued by the, the partisanship. But certainly I wouldn't want to portray that somehow he had endorsed me when I'm not sure that that's the case. You've raised a significant amount of money. you spent quite a bit on TV ads. The knock that I hear in your campaign is that despite all your efforts, there have been no polls out. There really has been no independent polls, but the polls that have come out there sort of show you somewhere in the middle of the pack which is not very high for where you might be given how much money you've raised and how much money you spent. Yes. Is, so, that a fair, is that a fair criticism? So I would say beware of any poll that's released pursuant to a press release. Uh, obviously we've done a fair amount of polling. We are confident of exactly where we stand in this race and it's certainly in that top tier. We feel very good about where we are, very good about our momentum and extremely good about where our plan is. So we, we've uh, decided not to tip our hand with our polling with some other folks, but we know exactly where we are. When you mentioned differentiating yourselves from other candidates, the one thing you used in terms of affordable housing was something that Bill Freeman is talking about. Do you perceive him as the front runner, the guy that you either got to beat or at least be second to in this race? You know, I'm not sure at this point. We've got another six weeks before this race is over. Obviously, he has spent a significant amount of money. He's probably outspent all of us three to one or four to one at this point. And so certainly if it was just on dollars, uh, he would be well ahead. But I, I don't know who that'll be at this point. Obviously, um, Bill has probably been the most aggressive from his campaign and we've tried to draw some contrast there. Uh, what you hear from most voters, in fact, if it was a candidate in the race, undecided would have been in the front throughout this entire race and may still be. Right. Why are voters so undecided? Is it because the candidates are not giving enough contrast between themselves? I, I think it's a couple of things. One, I think you see seven candidates that's an incredibly talented pool and in talented field that they all like. But also, we're now six weeks out, three weeks out from the start of the early vote. What we see just in the last week or 10 days is that people are beginning to wake up and beginning to pay attention and beginning to decide. There was a Tennessean columnist a couple of weeks ago, Keel Hunt, who said that he thought that Bill Freeman was likely to be the person to finish first, at least in the August primary, then we'd go to the runoff. He said if some other candidates, and I think he included you among the list, didn't think about getting out of the race, nobody was going to be able to stop Bill Freeman. Do you see the campaign that way? I, I don't necessarily see the campaign that way. I think, um, obviously, if Bill were to finish first, then it'd be a very spirited runoff race for whoever finishes second um, or finishes first and second. Um, certainly, we're confident about where we stand in that. We, based on what we know, what's happening in the field, and what we see on the ground, uh, we wouldn't trade our spot with anybody in this race including Bill Freeman. You don't see this as somebody emerging as being the anybody but Bill Freeman candidate? It may very well. We hear a lot of that conversation. Would you certainly. like to be that candidate? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to think that people are supporting me because they think I'd make a good mayor, but if they're supporting me because they don't want somebody else to be mayor, I'll take that support too. I don't have that luxury of turning away support. Now looking at your roster of supporters, a couple of people that have shown up in that most recently have been very close to Phil Bredesen, sure. Byron Trogger and uh, Dave Cooley. Is that an indication that the former mayor and governor is leading in your direction as well? Certainly I wouldn't want to speak for him. He is somebody that I think a lot of and when I think about leadership in this city and think about where we are today, I think about how he set the stage for that going back 20 years and certainly he's somebody that I have a lot of respect for and be honored to have his support, but I wouldn't want to speak for him. Another person who I believe is very close to you and has been supporting you is the current finance director of Metro, Rich Reveley. Sure. If you were elected mayor, would you plan to keep him on as finance director? I've made no commitments to anybody. Obviously um, I think given where the current finances are of the city, it's a pretty complex, almost $2 billion business. So I think anybody's going to be well served to keep Rich there, at least for some interim 
transition period, but I've made no commitments to anybody. Do you expect any support to come from Mayor Dean between now and August, or for that matter, in the runoff? You know, I don't have any idea uh, what the mayor is likely to do, but one of the reasons I got into this was I liked the momentum of the city. I liked what they had done. I think my style might be a little different. I think there'd be some different approaches on things, but I've got a lot of respect for the current administration, and I think their legacy would be safe with me. Now, all your TV ads have featured a campaign jingle. Some people <laughs> find it very catchy. Some people perhaps find it a little too catchy. Um, do you think your jingle has worked well or maybe too well? Uh, without question, I think it has worked well. Now, when they proposed this to me, my first question was, are you sure? And my second question was, I'll have to live with this for the next 50 years, right? Uh, but for somebody who started with almost zero name recognition, it certainly solved that problem. And then we've tried to come back with a lot of substance beyond that. If you live in, in West Nashville or Green Hills, you're emailing me saying, please make this stop. If you, if Once I spend time, though, in Goldsville or Madison or Donaldson or Bellevue, that song has caught on without question. And they appreciate the fact of somebody saying Nashville is bigger than just downtown. You've provided significant personal funds to your campaign as you go into July. We have another disclosure coming up early in the month of July. Do you plan to put in additional extra money of your own? I know you've been trying to raise money, yes, but sir. do you need to we, prime we, the pump a little more? We think this is a combination of both. It's a combination of raising money. We think we've raised more money than anybody else in the race at this time, but I continue and will continue to supplement that with my own funds as necessary. Resources will not be the issue for this campaign. I noticed in, in we're talking about these municipal IDs that we're talking about, you say that you, you feel so strongly about it, you would defend it. <laughs> you'd go to court yourself and defend that as a lawyer. Don't you have a legal director to do that? Uh, absolutely. So, But I, I was saying, the, the legality of that, and I, I don't I mean, if I'm elected mayor, I have no intention of practicing law, but what I was saying was I feel uh, strongly that we have the right to do that, so much so that if, I think even I could win that lawsuit. Charles Bone, thank you for coming on the show. If you win the runoff, we'll certainly have you, or in the runoff, we'll certainly bring you back to have on the show. Again. Thank you. I look forward to being back. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics. That's our show for this week. Hope you can join us again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the Loose Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. By the way, next week we'll be joined by Jeremy Kane as our mayoral guest. Hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.